Hey geeks, welcome to a new video. Today we have a special guest, neural net expert and prediction god Robert. Yeah, today we are talking about transformer models. I want to give you a basic overview about what they are and what you can do with the transformer models. So please like, comment and share the video and I hope you guys out there have fun. So guys, uh, let's dive right into it. Why do we need transformer models? So transformer models are mainly good for two purposes. On the one hand side, we can extremely good do some natural language processing tasks, like translating one sentence into the same sentence in, in another language. On the other hand, it is extremely good for time series prediction. Both approaches do have got very much in common because you do need for NLP tasks or, or for time series tasks, you do need to understand the right context in order to do predictions or to do translations of your input sequence. So why do we need uh, a transform model? So if you now have, for example, an artificial neural network, you can see that the input is taken as independent. And this is not good for analyzing sequences because we know that the input sequence has got some dependencies by each other, which cannot be captured by the artificial neural network. In order to solve this problem, recurrent neural networks were invented. As you can see, when you have an input, um, the recurrent unit denoted as A outputs um, a state, but also outputs a second state, which can be taken into account for the next prediction. So this inherits a dependency inside of the input sequence. A uh, recurrent neural network is most often um, appears as an encoder-decoder structure. So for example, you can see here several recurrent new neural uh, units or networks and they take separately um, the data of the input sequence into it, um, produce an encoder vector which is provided for the decoder structure. Again, several recurrent units. And now you can do predictions for NLP tasks or for time series tasks step by step with the information of the encoder vector, which is produced in the encoder as well. Unfortunately, the recurrent neural network runs into major limitations. For example, we have no ability uh, for parallelization of the network, so it runs all in series. And if you, for example, do a prediction in a time series task back here, and you need the information of points which are much ahead in the past, um, this information might be lost due to the recurrent structure in series. For solving that problem, uh, long short term memory networks or short LSTMs were invented, where you have a similar structure like in the recurrent units, but with more complex mathematical operations in it, as you can see here. For example, there's a forget gate, an input gate, or also an output gate. Every gate of it fulfills some different tasks which I don't want to provide too much information to on now. But it should end in um, the information being transferred better over longer distances. So the improvement of the forget gate is that the long-term dependencies are definitely enhanced, but we are still run into several disadvantages. For example, we don't solve the problem for parallelization with it. It has got a very slow training process due to much more mathematical operations in it and it still not solves the bottleneck of the long-term dependencies completely, um, especially for sequence length. For longer than 1000 steps, the information is still lost and the LSTM can not solve the problems completely. That's why the transformer network was invented in 2017. Please don't panic because of that big architecture. We tackle the transformer step by step in order to give you the best possibility to understand it. Again, you can see on the left, is the encoder structure and on the right is the decoder structure. So it also comes with the encoder decoder part. Right at the beginning, we put in the input sequence um, on, and process it through the input embedding. The aim of the input embedding is to extract all possible information from the data. For example, if we talk about an NLP task, we can't put the sentence itself into the algorithm. We need to transform it or embed it to provide some numerical values. This is done by an embedding algorithm. 
Um, for example, words uh, within similar word groups are put together inside of the embedding space. As you can see here, for example, for house, householding, gadgets, microwave, oven and the refrigerator are put together. So this makes it easy for the algorithm to, um, to understand the words better just by numerical values. Yeah, now we come to the positional encoding, which is a very important part of the algorithm. And this is very important, um, as you can see here, the data in the recurrent unit or in the recurrent structure, with, which is shown on the left, is processed in series. So each recurrent unit knows the position information of each data point. Um, for transformer networks, we are enabled to parallelize the um, operations. But this has a disadvantage because due to a missing recurrent structure, uh, we don't know any positional information of the numerical values anymore. So this position information needs to be inherited and this is done by the positional encoding. I don't want to give you too much detail about this picture, but this is produced by the two formulas down here and is a signal which can be added to the um, embedded input space. It looks rather complex, but actually the mathematical proof is quite simple. Um, and just by adding this signal to the embedding space, um, we enable the algorithm of knowing or of learning the relative positions of the input sequence to each other. So we solve the problem of the missing positional informations. And um, this is shown here schematically. This can be a typical signal which is added and uh, the result of the embedded space and the positional encoding is then put into the transformer and the model can learn the positional information. So this is quite useful. After we now have the embedded input space positional encoded, we now come to the most important part of the algorithm, with, which is the multi-head attention at first. So the multi-head attention, the aim of it is to focus on the most relevant context of the input sequence. So for NLP tasks, we should know when analyzing sentences on which part specifically of the sentence the most context should be paid on. So this is shown here for the word it, for example. For time series prediction, it is actually quite similar. For predicting this point in time, we need to know on which previous points in time we need to put uh, attention on. Uh, for example, when predicting uh, these two spikes, more attention should be paid on this part of the sequence than, for example, on this part. So the aim of the transformer is to calculate the attentions for every task it, it does. And this is also, again, schematically shown in here. For example, when we process the sentence, the animal didn't cross. We want to know for especially this word now, where the contexts are the biggest. And this is done by calculating an attention vector. We do that for every, uh, for every data point and in the end receive a complete attention matrix which shows us exactly where the attentions um, should lie in that example. And as you can see in the algorithm, not only a self-attention mechanism is used, but a multi-height attention. This is a quite similar concept, just a little bit improved or advanced. On the left, you can see the self-attention mechanism we just talked about. On the right, we can see the multi-head attention, which is pretty much the same. But in order to only do one self-attention calculation, we do several calculations inside of one multi-head attention module. Um, this should avoid the model from putting too much attention on the word itself. For example, on the word kick, it should not pay attention the most on itself, but also on other parts of the same sentence. And this is done by doing this calculation more than once inside one unit. Um, the feed forward layer is um, not uh, that complex. This is just um, put in to the algorithm after a normalization layer. And this should just enhance the abstraction level of the algorithm, but also should transform the, the favorite uh, dimensionality which is needed in that case. The most important part is the multi-head attention mechanism. The additional and normalizing um, layers are just for training purposes and should be not part of this video. After we now understood the encoder, which outputs also an encoder vector here at the end, we now want to talk about the decoder. As you can see here, which is sometimes um, not easy to understand at the beginning, is that we also do have an input for the decoder part of the transformer. So this is transformed similar to before 
and the input of the decoder is our target sequence, so the sequence we actually want to predict. Um, it is processed in the same way and is then put into the decoder. You may ask now why the target sequence is put into the decoder as an information, because that could sound uh, that it makes no sense at all. It is just actually done for training purposes, so in order to convert, to make the algorithm converge faster. But now we need to know how to prevent the model from utilizing this future data in order to make predictions. Because if you give the decoder the full information about the target sequence, there's actually no magic anymore in doing some good predictions, right? So we need to find a good way for solving this problem. And this is called the mask multi-head attention. The mask multi-head attention also calculates the attention vectors like before, but it cannot take data points into account, which lie further into the future. So for example, for analyzing the sentence l'animal n'a pas traversé, it only, for the first word l'animal, it only can take itself into account because there are no previous data points in that time. Um, so the attention vector does not provide any information because it only gives one for itself and zero for all remaining words because it is not possible because they are masked out. If we now look on the second word, it can take itself again, but also the previous word. So we see that the attention starts to distribute more. As we do it for the whole sentence, we see that for the last word, it can take all the previous words into account for doing the prediction or the analysis for that because all the words here before are previous scored so um, we don't have any left word information flow or any information from the future so just by that algorithm or by that masking out we prevent the algorithm of having future data um, and now this is actually the attention module which is the most important of the whole model it is called the encoder decoder attention the encoder-decoder attention, as you can see, um, it connects the input sequence that the animal didn't cross with the target sequence or with the predicted target sequence, l'animal n'a pas traversé. For translating it from English to French, we need to know, for example, for the prediction for pas, we need to know on which words of the actual input sequence it should put attention on. And this is calculated in the encoder-decoder attention. And again, we receive some attention vectors for every part of the target sequence here at the end. So the encoder-decoder attention combines the information of both languages and actually makes the translation possible. This is done several times. So um, now we have only see one layer of an encoder-decoder structure, but we can put several units behind in order to enhance the abstraction level of the whole model. So um, it's, it is common to use between three and six layers each of the encoder-decoder. So this model is actually in real life even bigger than you can see here on this scheme. Um, at the end of the decoder, we um, have again a final layer. Um, this final layer is different uh, due to different applications. Uh, for example, if we try to tackle some natural language processing problems, we have a linear layer um, or dense layer at the end, and then the, the outputs of this layer are put into a softmax function, which calculates the probabilities for the next word in the, in the target sequence. For time series prediction, it is a little bit um, easier because we don't need more softmax function because we actually want to predict numerical values. So we can choose the dimensionality as high as we want it. And if we only want to do a univariate um, prediction, we only use a one dimensional output vector, which gives us the next scalar output of the target sequence. Okay guys, I hope you liked the video. In my next video, I want to give you some more information about the transformer architecture. If you have any ideas or suggestions on which topic you want to get further information, please drop it in the comment and we will try to provide some answer for that. Keep transforming guys!